Welcome to the Holidays to Switzerland Travel Podcast. Your host is the founder of Holidays to Switzerland.com and the Switzerland Travel Planning Facebook group, Carolyn Schonefinger. On this podcast, Carolyn will be joined by a variety of guests who share their knowledge and love of the country to help you plan your dream trip to Switzerland. This is episode 15 of the Holidays to Switzerland Travel Podcast. Today's episode is all about the beautiful town of Spies and the surrounding Lake Thun area. My guest is Kashu Morgenstern, Head of Sales and Marketing at the Belvedere Strand Hotel in Spies. I first met Kashu a few years ago when she worked for Jungfrau Tourism and I'm really excited to chat to her today. Knowing how passionate she is about the beautiful region that she lives in, I'm sure she will have lots of wonderful info to share with us today. Hi, Kashu. Thanks for chatting to me today. Hi, good morning. Nice to be there. Thank you. Can you start by telling us a bit about your background in the tourism industry in Switzerland? Yeah, for sure. So originally I'm from Germany where I studied hotel management And then I lived a few years in Spain and uh, about 10 years ago, I moved to Switzerland. Um, It has been already the Bernese Oberland. Back then I worked um, in the in a five-star hotel in Grindelwald and uh, I moved to the tourism board. And after having my baby, I can't travel that much anymore as I did before. So um, now I'm working for um, the Belvedere Strand Hotel in Spitz, as you said. And yeah, that's a family owned and run hotel. So it's really cool. Oh, great. So what does your current role involve? And, and what are you know, some of the, the history and the highlights of the, hand, the, um, the hotel? Yeah, um, the hotel has been detected uh, to hospitality and tradition already over 100 years ago. As I said, um, it's owned by a family. They have a small chain uh, around the Tunase or Lake of Tun um, with uh, different hotels. And the hotel I'm working in, we do have uh, 56 rooms in total. And, um, yeah, I take care of all the marketing and sales stuff. Uh, I would be there if anybody has any questions. I would help travel agents and tour operators um, to find also the right activities around. And, yeah, that's what I'm doing currently. Um, maybe some more things about the hotel. Um uh, we have a kind of two buildings. So there's the traditional main building, which already has been built 100 years ago. And uh, currently we're finishing the construction site of the second part. It's a kind of uh, terraced annex building. And with that, we will have uh, 56 rooms in four-star superior segment. Lovely. Uh, and there's some pretty... Um, impressive uh, I think um, act or activities or things that you can partake at in the hotel there an infinity pool sounds just wonderful yeah um, definitely one of our highlights uh, by side of the um, private leader which we have uh, it's uh, only for hotel guests and uh yeah, both sides are really great in summertime, but also in winter. So our infinity pool is uh, solar heated. So um, you can take also a swim during winter time uh, in the warm water. And there's something quite unique about the bar also. Yeah, uh, the bar has been built right now with the construction. Um, it's uh, It uh, looks like a ship. And it has, uh, it's really the best bar around uh, Lake of Thun with having the view to the Bay of Spiez. Yeah, uh, especially sunsets are really amazing during summertime. You can sit outside, have a drink. You have to look to the castle and the wine yards of Spiez. And you can also see the um, along the Lake of Thun. Wonderful. Now, I was going to ask you just to explain to those people that are listening that don't know exactly where Spitz is. Um, They 
possibly haven't heard of it before. So can you tell us exactly uh, where it's located? Yeah, I would say it's halfway between Interlaken and Thun and it's directly at the lake. That's mm-hmm. the easiest thing to say, yeah. Yeah, and the, the hotel itself is built sort of on the side of a hill, isn't it, o- overlooking the lake? Yeah, and also uh, looking towards the bay. So all of the other hotels around Spitz, they're looking from the bay um, outside. So they're situated in the bay, and we're looking to the bay and also to the lake. And the bay, by the way, is called the most, uh, the most beautiful bay in Europe. Mm-hmm. It's certainly uh, very attractive. Yeah. <laughs> so why is staying in Spitz such, such a good alternative to, say, um, staying in a hotel in Interlaken or Bern? Um, first of all, it's directly at the lake. If you've ever been to Thun or to Interlaken, you know if you're staying in a hotel, you have to walk towards the lake, but you're never directly at the lake. So if you're staying in Spitz, the views are just amazing because you can just overlook the lake. And then second thing, it's definitely quieter than the other cities, but it has really good uh, transport options, so really good connections. So within 20 minutes, you're in Interlaken, with, and we even have direct trains to Zurich Airport and Milan. Wonderful. So what are some of the best things uh, that you can do in Spitz? Um, as I said before, we have an old castle uh, in Spitz, which lies directly in the wine yard. So walking around there, having a look in the castle, maybe uh, some drinks on their terraces, um, a wine tasting with the wine yards for sure. We also have the, our proper wine in Spitz. And walking along the lake for sure, um, just enjoying the feeling being at the lake and uh, really tip from locals. If you're in Spitz, then the view from the Migros restaurant is really great. <laughs> yeah, so Migros for them who don't know, it's a supermarket, but it has a, um, it has a restaurant up there and you have the view all over the lake. Yeah, I um, I admit that when I first visited Spitz, uh, we stumbled, it was actually raining, so we got off the train, we thought, well, we need an umbrella, so we went into the supermarket to to buy an umbrella and decided we'd go upstairs to the restaurant to have some lunch and, wow, the view just, that was so amazing. So that was a a really good thing to sort of find and then then we wandered on down into the, uh, the bay and, uh, went into the castle and of course the views from the the, uh, the tower of the castle are just incredible as well yeah yeah that's definitely like that i mean all around it doesn't really matter where you are but um this thing in the micros restaurant is really something also local people use and it's uh, we go there to have our normal lunch break and then you just sit around and you really enjoy the uh, view that's right yeah the, the best of both worlds you get a, a reasonable reasonably priced meal and and a wonderful view for free yeah that's right uh, so lake turns quite a large lake it stretches from Tune to Interlaken. Um, so there's obviously other little villages and things around the lake as well. What what else can people do if they're um, staying in Spitz or, or somewhere around the lake? What are some of the other popular activities? Yeah, so uh, a lake cruise definitely. You can take the, the boat directly from Inter, uh, from sorry from Spitz, and then it hits toward Interlaken or Tune. Uh, you can maybe combine it with a walk along the lake and then take a part of it by boat. Mm-hmm. Or uh, we in the hotel, for example, we also rent um, e-bikes where you could take a part by e-bike. And we also have um, a kind of small shipping boat, which you can uh, use without driving license for it. And you can take your own... Um, 
your own cruise around the lake. And then if you go a bit further, for sure, to visit the cities of Thun and Interlaken, which are uh, really nice, we have caves, uh, the St. Beatus caves um, next to Interlaken. Or if you want to go a bit higher up to the mountains, you can go to Beatenberg, for example. The Stockhorn is really nice, which is next to us. Uh, Mount Niesen, which is just behind the hotel, for example. Or just opposite on the other lake side, there is also the suspension bridge in Sigriswil. Okay, so how how would people access all those places? I um, assume there's cable cars and and mountain railways to get up to all those places you've mentioned. Um, as I said before, Spitz is uh, really good connected by trains and also buses to buses towards Thun. If you'd like to go around like that, I don't think it's necessary to have a car. Um, I mean, the trains are so frequent that you really can just go, go to the uh, train station. Within the next 20 minutes, you will have a train. And um, it's also a very scenic train ride if you take the train from Spitz to Interlaken, for example. Uh, by side of that, anybody who stays uh, in Spitz will receive the panorama card from Thun uh, with different advantages. So you get uh, discounts on the uh, to go up to the mountaintops or for the suspension bridge, as I mentioned before. And also you can use the buses for free to move uh, towards Thun, for example. Okay. So with some of those uh, places that you mentioned, Beatenberg and the, the suspension bridge, can you, can you tell us a little bit more about those? What, what can people see when, when they get there? Uh, so both uh, places, Sigriswil and also Beatenberg, are on the other lakeside, so just opposite the hotel. They would look towards um, Spiez. Um, as you go upwards, uh, then you would not only see uh, the lake from above, but also all of the um, mountains of the Bernese Oberland around. So the uh, view from there is really great. And uh, in Sigriswil, there is a suspension bridge where you could walk over. How, how long is the bridge? Uh, I would say it's about 100 meters. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Sounds like something um, that would... Uh, that you know lots of people would would enjoy yeah for sure so in your opinion what is the best time of year to visit Spitz um for us as Swiss uh it's all year round each uh, season has its own charm but for foreigners for sure I think it's more about spring to autumn yeah, during that time, I mean, in springtime, you have all the flowers around. Uh, for example, in the castle of Spitz, they really have a nice garden side where you can see it. And uh, then in autumn, for example, the colors of the trees and everything around uh, of the vineyards, they're really great. Good. Now, when if people are staying in Spitz, um, what can they expect in the way of, like, are there many um, other restaurants and shops Um or do they – obviously we've mentioned that there's the Migros supermarket there, so if they need to grab a few supplies, they can. But it, what's the, the population of the of the town? Roughly, I would say uh, about uh, 7,000. Yeah, you can find everything. Like the, the Migros restaurant is really something local people go to because it's um, next to the um, biggest supermarket. But then, then along the lake shore, you have a lot of, you can find a lot of restaurants. Um, all of the hotels do have restaurants inside, um, which, uh, where you can walk in usually. Uh, in our hotel, for example, we do have a nice restaurant with an outside terrace where you can also enjoy the view during your dinner time or during the lunch if you go to the bar. So, um, yeah, and then there are a lot of small t uh, shops um, uh, along the lakeshore. Mm -hmm. Great. So people will find what, whatever they need. They they won't really be needing to go to one of the bigger towns to find anything. 
No, it's just if they really want to go around to do shopping, then I would say then they have to move to Toon, Bern or to Interlaken. If they really want to go for clothes or something. And yeah, then for really shopping experience, they they would have to go to a bigger town. Yeah, but for a, a, just for a great holiday experience, they'll find everything they need in Spitz. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> So what is the number one reason that you would um, tell someone that they should should stay in Spitz when they're heading to that uh, Interlaken sort of Bernese Oberland region? Um, I would say it's the atmosphere. Uh, the atmosphere we get from the really great views we do have in there. So wherever you go, you have this uh, lake view. You see the wine yards and stuff and gives kind of – very warm and welcoming atmosphere. You feel like uh, being somewhere in Italy and uh, especially if you sit down on a terrace in the evening and enjoy the sunset, then it really feels like holidays. Excellent. And, of course, if people are heading there, they should um, definitely book in at the Belvedere Strand Hotel. Oh, yeah, I would really love to welcome them, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So I'll link to the, um, the the hotel's website in the show notes for the episode so that people can get more information. And they can find those show notes at holidaystoswitzerland.com forward slash episode 15. Thank you very much, um, Cashew, for speaking with us and telling us a little bit more about Spitz and, and the Lake Toon region. And hopefully we're sending, uh, when it's safe to travel again, hopefully we're sending lots more people to to visit you. Yeah, thank you, Caroline, and thank everybody to hear about it. <laughs> You're welcome. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Oh, that was fantastic. I really hope you enjoyed everything that Cashew had to share with us today. Spies is a really wonderful little village to visit. Uh, it's really picturesque and it's often overlooked by people who are so uh, focused on visiting Interlaken and the Jungfrau region that uh, it, it gets overlooked, but it's really, really worth, worth a visit. Now, if you do plan to visit Spies or anywhere actually in the, the whole Bernese Oberland, it's really worth considering purchasing a regional pass Berner Oberland as it includes lots of the uh, destinations or the attractions that uh, Cashew mentioned today. Uh, it covers train travel between Bern and Luzerne, so a, a quite a distance. So if you're in Interlaken and you want to go to Spies or to Thun, that's covered, as well as those further destinations that I just mentioned. It also includes discounts on admission to the castles that are around the lake and lots of other museums and attractions. Um, and it includes the, some of the mountain excursions that uh, Cashew mentioned, like Beatenberg and Niesen, as well as uh, discounted um, tickets to the Jungfrau Jock and a lot of the others like the Schinniger Platt, Harder Kulma, also included in the Bernese Oberland Pass. So I'll link to more information about that uh, in the show notes with all the other info that you can find about this episode. Thanks again for joining us and I look forward to chatting with you next time. Thank you so much for listening. For more great resources on planning a trip to Switzerland, make sure you visit holidaystoswitzerland.com where you'll find trip planning tips, destination guides, information on transport, including Swiss rail passes and much more. You're also encouraged to join the Switzerland Travel Planning Group on Facebook where you can ask questions and chat to other past and future travellers to Switzerland. You'll find show notes from today's episode at holidaystoswitzerland.com forward slash podcast and be sure to subscribe to the Holidays to Switzerland Travel Podcast so you never miss an episode.